We have lift off here. Gosh, we can speak to Harry right now. He was on that very first train from Abbey Wood. Hello, Harry. Good morning. Good morning, Vanessa. How are you doing? I'm fine, but not as well as you're doing, because I think you're feeling thoroughly excited and over the moon and all of that to be part of this historic day and occasion. I am, and possibly for the first time in this entire project, something has been delivered on time. The train arrived at Paddington <laughs> 28 minutes after it departed from Abbey Wood, and there was a giant roar, a big cheer on arrival. As you can imagine, people were absolutely delighted to savour this moment of London transport history. Can, can you explain what, what that journey would have entailed before Crossrail? Would it have been the same but longer, or would it have been not possible to travel from one point to the other in that way? Yeah, it would have been a lot longer. I've taken it many times myself, actually, because, as you know, to get to the southwest, you need to go to Paddington. So from Abbey Wood, you would normally go via Charing Cross. Charing Cross itself takes 41 minutes, right. possibly a little longer at peak time. And then you have to take the Bakerloo line. Obviously, you have to change trains. That adds on extra time. So it's just shy of an hour to get to Paddington. And we did it today in 28 minutes. Oh, so fabulous. it's a game changer for people in Abbey Wood. Yeah. Yes, so a really big deal. And you were there to witness it. What about the, 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 the mythical, silent nature of this trip? I've heard that the yeah, train doesn't brilliant. make any noise. Is that right? It was, it, yeah, you're, you've heard correctly. It yeah. was incredibly smooth. I must admit, I almost lost my footing because the train was going at a decent lick once we picked up speed and went into the tunnel underneath London. Once yeah. we left Abbey Wood, we went straight underground. And, yeah, it was very, very quiet. None of that screeching and, you know, those awful sounds you get on some of the particularly loud sections of the northern and central line. I where do. I grew up on the northern line. in your ears. Yeah, I know exactly yeah, what you mean. You yeah, know, it's just awful. Yeah. None of that today. The only noise pollution, if you like, came from the announcement see it, say it, sort it, you know, wear, uh, wear masks where possible. Yeah. And obviously the next station, which is important information, of course, to hear. What about, uh, that what the about only thing you could hear. Harry, what about the look of the trains? Do they look streamlined and especially modern and unlike other trains, or do they look just like ordinary trains? No, they look very, very clean. Uh, purple seating, lots of white, lots of cream, uh, but very airy. The lighting was lovely. Uh, you could walk from one end of... The train to the other which i did you can get one and a half thousand people on these trains vanessa which is one of the things that marks it out from the rest of the tube not only does it travel on network rail lines it also has a massive amount of capacity no toilets on board but tfl say that that allows an extra 600 people an hour potentially to travel on board right but yeah very very pleasant experience and a very quick one and tell me what other people were saying well, I spoke to Catherine Weinberg. She was uh, one of the people on board. She was going to a conference at the University of East Anglia, lives in Woolwich. Yeah. And her journey would have been a bit of a pig. I went to the University of East Anglia and I travelled many times from South East London. It takes ages to pick up the train from Liverpool Street. Today, she jumped on and was there within 12 minutes. So she was very, very happy. I've also been speaking to lots of businesses in the area. Abbey Wood is one of the most deprived parts of London. It's little known, if we're honest. I think a lot of people will be wondering where is Abbey Wood. Yeah, go on, Post explain where it is, because I've got a map in front of me. I said to Barry, yeah. who's producing me today, I said, before I talk authoritatively <laughs> on the radio about east and west and west and east, I better just work out where the heck it is and where my bones. I grew up in Totteridge on the northern line. I moved a bit further yes. in. Now I'm in St John's Wood. I'm very familiar with the tube as it is, but but that particular journey, not one of mine. So you, you, you need to put it on the map for us, I think. Yeah, well, it's, uh, the station itself actually straddles the boroughs of Bexley and Greenwich. So one side of the station is one borough and the other is the other. So it's right on the outskirts of London. According to a Greenwich Council report in 2015, it is within the 10% of most deprived wards in the country, Abbey Wood. It's not particularly salubrious when you come out of the station, even now, I think it may have been a different story had it opened in 2018, but even now there's large tower blocks. Yesterday there were big bin bags outside on the, on the station, lots of construction workers around, as you can imagine. But yes, a business is very, very excited, obviously, about the fact that it's opening. And I spoke to one of them, Lola, who owns Yummy Cakes, which is if you come out of the crossrail exit to the left as you escape. We moved into the shop front in January, and it was one of the... Um, reasons, the selling points of why we, we came here. As you know, this is the first stop and this is the last stop. So we know that many people coming from Kent who wants to join the train station, they would have somewhere to wait while waiting for their trains. So yes, we're optimistic. 
So Lola's on the left as you exit the station. If you exit to the right, the somewhat euphemistically named Abbey Wood Village will greet you. And there's bookies, there's takeaway shops, there's a village store, there's a Greg's, there's estate agents as well. We'll come to that in a moment. But there's also Nim, who opened a business in anticipation of Crossrail finally opening well, he thought it was going to open in 2018, got the business in 2014. And although he couldn't hide his disappointment about the delays, he actually said to me and told the BBC years ago that he thought they were going to go under. He's delighted that this railway has finally arrived. The impact four and a half, four and a half years ago would have been immense. I think with uh, everything that's happened over the last couple of years with COVID, etc., people working from home, I think it'd be a little bit, little bit challenging. However, I think it'd be a slow burner. I think people just don't understand how high speed this train's going to be, how quickly you better get from east to west London. And of course, if you've got more businesses and you've got more services to the area, what do you suppose is going to happen to the value of property? So I went and spoke to Paul Winters, a local estate agent, and asked him what's been the impact on the rental market and on the housing market more generally. The impact that's already been has been sort of amazing and, and really good for a number of years um, since the work started. Um, and I can only see it going one way, which is going to be, which is going to be up, really. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a really good market. The, the majority of our buyers are coming from sort of North London, East London, South West London, because um, it is still one of the cheaper parts of London. So it's still a good place to buy. People come here and say, oh, my God, I can't believe it's so green and things like that. So it's, people are still really excited to buy. Harry, I must admit, I'm thoroughly enjoying broadcasting this morning. I really am. I'm just thinking this is a big deal. It's a big day. It's incredibly exciting. It's going to improve people's lives. It's been a hell of a long time in the coming and it's been incredibly expensive. But at least we've got here. Are you feeling a kind of surge of elation about all of this? I am. It's rare in broadcasting that you can celebrate. And I'm <laughs> oh, celebrating true. because I can see two two women with massive, giant, purple foam fingers. Uh, One woman has got an... I can't <laughs> get to her because she's the other side of the gate, but she's got a massive mane of purple hair. People Excellent. are genuinely very, very excited about this. And to your point <laughs> at the top when you introduced this item, although you may not be using the Elizabeth line yourself, yeah. you as a Londoner may benefit from this because the existence of the Elizabeth line takes the strain off the other lines on the network. <laughs> Sure. and diverts people away from the central, the northern, the Bakerloo, Piccadilly, whatever it may be, and brings them onto this railway, which may make your commute a little bit more bearable. So a great day for Transport for London, a great day at last for the passengers who have been long-suffering, as you've said many times, yeah. and a, just a great feeling to be a part of it in some small way. Well, I feel the same, so that's good. We're completely united on that, Harry. A beautiful report from you, may I say. Lovely report from an enthusiastic Harry Lowe. And why shouldn't you be enthusiastic? It's taken ages to happen. And it's been incredibly expensive. It looked as if it was never going to happen. And today it really 